Then there's Rob Siegel is from Newton and is a Boston folk singer-songwriter who is known for the equal distribution of his gifts of guitar, songwriting, and delivery as very talented. What folks from the folk music circles might not know about Rob is he's an author of a column, The Hack Mechanic, and of four books addressing the topics related to cars, which is another passion of his. What the car reader fans might not know about him is that he is a talented singer-songwriter because he is humble and kind man when it comes to art and life. And we can also throw in there that he is married and has three children and four. And he is a nature enthusiast who also happens to work around the country as a geophysicist. As a singer-songwriter, he has shared the stage with Vance Gilbert, Bill Staines, Jeff Muldauer, and others. His first CD, Shaker Chair, was released in 2000, and his second CD, Voices from the Right Brain, was recorded live at Club Passim and released in 2004. And Rob claims this CD earned him spot 52 on the folk DJ ranking, which ain't bad for a guy who almost never travels outside of the 495 interstate for a gig, he says. <laughs> a man also of humor as well as honesty of being human, Rob claims he took his foot off the pedal of music making in the mid-2000s when his children were off to college to pay the bills, but he's back now out and performing and is presently recording his third CD. I am very much looking forward to the songs he has to share and invite you to put your hands together to welcome Rob Siegel. Thanks, Cheryl. Sits there all hunched over, those weird glasses on his face. Impossibly strong lenses to interrogate small space. In placing gears with tweezers and winding tiny springs. The enabler of time itself, creator of small things. But in an age of Chinese knockoffs, five bucks out on the street, digital. Disposable, some point, admit defeat. Soon he will not be of value. His lease will be withdrawn. The store will be a Starbucks. The watchmaker will be gone. Put the set right there, says Ernie, as it shudders to the ground. Second floor store made sense before they weighed 400 pounds. Philo Farnsworth's troubled children, he used to fix them all. When you still could change a picture tube and then degauss a coil. But now the world wants plasma, 82 inch LCDs. When they break, no way to fix them, you just buy a bigger screen. Like American supremacy we always thought would last. The small TV repair shop will soon be in the past. throw away without a second thought. How does it work with people when we start to break apart? Do 
we still pick up the pieces when the going gets complex? Or like the watchman and repairman, is the marriage counselor next? Perhaps it's this New England soil where waste is next to sin. But I can't bear to throw away what's barely broken in. So I'll fill my house with picture tubes and not wind my watch too tight. And keep loving the same woman until I get it right. Thank you so much. And speaking of American supremacy, we never thought would last. He was the best and the brightest, the numbers guy from Ford. Anything he couldn't measure could simply be ignored. With his whiz kid friends from Harvard, handpicked for the new frontier, analysis of data crunch the numbers, answer clear. So when the ghosts of Dien Bien Phu started rapping at the door, events were set in motion for McNamara's war. He analyzed the bombings, the yields and the troops. He parametrized the models, he anesthetized the truths. A rational objective, they let the war expand to the point where the North's losses should be more than they can stand. He tracked all of the metrics from the air and ground attacks. The inputs were the soldiers, the outputs body bags. Half a million strong, so the Viet Cong should choose to fight no more. A fundamental error in McNamara's war. Cause the dominoes were never gonna tumble. The hearts and minds were never ours to win. But that red tide sure flowed when it came out 58,000 soldiers' veins The master of the details had to flee The picture was too big for him to see Focus through the fog of war The vulgar escalation To construct the winning scar Bet with age and wisdom He admitted they were wrong There were things they could not measure They killed a million Viet Cong And so it's now another country it's now another fight. It's not a Cold War proxy. This time, maybe we're right. But there's American soldiers dying. And every week I read their names. I don't think our leader is lying. But I'm worried just the same. And though I hope this time it's different, I'm not entirely sure we ever learned the lesson from McNamara's war. We 
have songs that we love. We have songs that inhabit us in some way. Um, and if we love a Beatles song, that's great. But everyone knows that song. Um, the songs that friends of ours write that we love are perhaps, are perhaps extra special because not as many people know them. And so we become like a vessel for those sorts of songs because they're more private. So this is that carried to its logical extreme. A friend of mine in high school wrote a song that I heard once that has haunted me for 40 years. And I remember only one line from the song. So this is a song about that song. <laughs> My friend John, we swapped songs in high school. His were always better. He was likely less depressed. There was one song about the night sky in December. I remember only one line. I've forgotten all the rest. It's been 40 years this winter since I heard him play the song. When I close my eyes, I still hear that refrain so clear and strong. Soon Orion is swinging around in the sky. It was a waltz. He sang it just like I just played it. The rest of it's gone hazy, save that fragment that remains. But he explained. How Orion heralds winter How the hunter stalks the starry fox The angles and the equinox How he goes from reclining To stand upright in the sky And the stars Betel, Geese, and Rigel And the others, everybody knows The three stars on his belt Week by week he climbs the heavens Chasing prey across the sky Till he towers in the darkness Lord of the winter night December and Orion is swinging around in the sky But the rest has been forgotten Oh, the things I used to know I am blessed to be the vessel Of this line dropped in the snow Orion's march is ceaseless, though it makes for jealous men. Cause when our arc is over, we don't rise back up again. My friend John, it had been years since we had spoken. The letter from his young wife, the ending of his short life, the disease I did not know. And he was gone. Like the shooting stars of summer One bright line from an old song Nine notes burned into neurons An earworm across eons Still shining just like him Four decades since his singing And that line's still in my brain How Orion's up there swinging Can I be all that remains? Is there a tape stuffed in a box somewhere? I asked his family but the trail, it went dark I guess it's only me So when you see The first week of December The ancient hunter rising In the cold gray eastern sky See him stand And survey all creation Till Scorpio heralds springtime And drives him from the sky don't complain about the weather or the depth of fallen snow Cause I'm still here to see the giant with the dagger and the bow It's winter and Orion is swinging around in the sky
So, to my stunned surprise, an old friend of mine from high school is here. That's a, uh, John is um, John Davidoff. So, just to be clear. Well, thank you so much. Um, so, I went to my 40th high school reunion, and I was chatting with a friend of John's, and I said that I had wrote this song about a song that John had sung 40 years ago about which I can only remember one line. And my friend said the last thing I ever expected him to say was it that song about the night sky? And my jaw just dropped open and I said, how could you possibly know that? And it turned out that he had gone to Harvard with John, lived in the dorm, and John apparently used to play the song in the coffee houses of the dorm. So it was oddly, um, it was an odd relief that in fact the song may reside in other folks' heads other than just my own. So all of those songs are off my upcoming CD, Philo Farnsworth's Troubled Children. Uh, which is my first CD in uh, 14 years. This one is not. Um, our singer-songwriter friend, Lisa Bastoni, has a song called The Rabbit Hole uh, about not wanting to re-engage um, casually um, uh, an old lover. And she, use, she uses the phrase, an un um, uh, my unprotected heart. And I heard the song and I heard the phrase and I thought about the great explosive relationship 40 years ago in my past and wondered why I never wrote about it. So and then I finally did. for you I watched it burn the brightest pretty blue I stoked that lonely flame all by myself I swear that it sucked oxygen from my own best brain cells it was that big love triangle back in school I played you David Crosby's triad, what a fool. The embodiment of hippie freaking zen. I thought if it was meant to work out, it'd work out in the end. But he knew what he wanted, and I knew you were gone. I thought I'd drown in Jackson Brown these days, oh what a song. I sleepwalk through the aftermath, a year in my own doubt. But I never sang about it. I still have that note you left for me, where you explained why we could never be. You said something in you wished to follow through But that the pain would be too much to bear For him and me and you You know I always fell hardest for the ones That ended when they started And I wondered how come I guess it left me free to project Entire fantasy relationships on my cerebral tent But when I look back through time's distance It's nearly 40 years I wrote songs about lesser loves That still ring in my ears But the one that nearly killed me Knocked me down for the count I wondered why I never sang about it But 
Then I looked in my old journals And I saw my young man's pain As I imagined him with you again, again, again The celestial body's impact The shock waves in my dreams The raw and bloody echoes Like Munch's painting of the scream A song would only amplify The bloody aftershocks the black reverberations and I had to make them stop it would have ripped my heart asunder had I given them a voice I needed to be quiet to survive I had no choice but all that passion has long been burned away you're my old friend and you will be until our dying day we're both happy in our lives you're still with him and we can shoot each other smiles that make me think i might still win well i heard a young woman sing her song about her unprotected heart and what went wrong her aching was a wonder to behold It made me want to reach and touch the pain Before I get too old It might be water underneath the bridge That's long been washed away Or trying to look through city lights To see the Milky Way But I can still hear the screams echo and the last one seems to shout Perhaps it's time you sang about it Well, I carried the torch too long for you Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. I'm back. <laughs> cool. Let's do something a little bit lighter. So this is another one off the new CD. The new CD hopefully will be out around January. It's taking forever like all of the things that we care about very deeply should. This is for anyone who has ever loved and lost a guitar. I had a Guild D40. It was my first real guitar. I was 13 when the salesman pulled it off the wall and the sound and feel and smell of her I knew she was the one it was a start of a threesome me and her and Neil Young she was a stronghold for my sanity my familiar in the dark the creator of my calluses and I wore the finish off often lonesome and despondent a walking broken heart that guitar took all my pounding transmuting pain to art but that smell was like a potion when I'd open up the case the spruce and the mahogany like incense for my faith I'd pick her up and hold her and breathe that essence in and be back in that guitar store our affair began but we were star-crossed lovers we'd argue and we'd fight I sent her back to guild four times her neck was never right I started seeing other instruments I guess I'm a fickle man and when her bridge began to pull I sent her back again but that smell was the connection when I'd open up the case the spruce and the mahogany remembrance of that place I'd do the Marcel Proust thing catch a whiff and step into 
at that second floor guitar store in 1972. A big box arrived on my front porch, I hauled it on inside. My resurrected mail order problem child bride. I hoped that they'd fixed her and we'd renew our routine of the love affair I'd had with her since I was 13. But when I opened up the case I found when they replaced the bridge, they put a shiny coat of lacquer on that old finish that I'd ridged. She was a stranger with a facelift and an unfamiliar smell, and it shattered the connection I used to love so well. I tried to play her, but it was just gone. I really did not know what to do. She sat alone and untouched under the bed for many years. I said, okay, we'll go on a road trip together, you and me in a hotel room for two weeks, but if we can't work this out, it's over. But there was nothing, so I let her go. I sold her to a woman, though it nearly broke my heart. A gift for her fiancé, though they later split apart. I hope someone appreciates her warm tone and her wood. I hope somebody loves her, because I no longer could. So now I play other instruments that aren't so battle-scarred. They're responsive and expensive. I don't pound them quite as hard. Their intonation's flawless if they lack a certain zen. We have intimate sessions, but they did not know me when. Oh God, I miss the smell of her when I open up a case. I guess that cedar and rosewood just don't transmute time and space. I track her down and find her but I still can't get back to that guitar store in Northampton in 1972. I had a guilty 40, and I wonder where you are. Thank you so much. <laughs>